Hey y'all, it's Crystal and Mrs. HappyHomemaker.com and I have something to share with you guys. So many of you know that I love antique cookbooks, handwritten recipes, that kind of stuff. I collect them. I even sell them in my antique cookbook store, AntiqueCookbooks.com, if you didn't already know that. Well, one of these I've been holding on to for a while and I'm not going to sell it, but it's so special to me and it's got a little bit of a story to it. So I wanted to share it with you guys and tell a little bit of a story. So this is my favorite um, handwritten antique cookbook kind of thing. It is actually in a Mortician Supply Company book from 1959. <laughs> How cool is that, right? Or, or strange, however you look at it. Anyhow, so um, the story. A few years ago, I was going to an estate sale, which I love, love, love estate sales. This one, there was this cute little elderly lady and she was selling all sorts of cooking stuff. And we struck a conversation and I told her a little bit who, a little bit about who I am and what I do for a living. And it was, it was quite interesting to her and I bought several things off of her. And before I was leaving, she's wait, wait, Crystal, Crystal, come back. I want to give you something. And so I come back in and she said, hold on one second. And she went to the back room. A few minutes later, she came back with this, this. And inside of it is chock full of old, old recipes. Now she told me that it was her great aunt's cookbook and that she didn't have any children to leave it to and that she wanted somebody to take it who would love it and cook and cherish it. And she no longer cooked anymore. Her, her nephew was actually there with her and he said, are, are you sure? Are you sure you want to give that to her? It's just, yes, I, I'm absolutely sure. I've asked all the family if they wanted it. Nobody wants it. Nobody really cares about it. But I think it's cool. And I want to give it to somebody who equally would think it's cool and would use the recipes and continue to let her memory live on with these recipes. Well, I was so honored and so tickled that she gave it to me. I actually tried to hand it back to her on several occasions because I was just like, are you sure? Are you sure? It seems like to me like a, you know, a priceless family heirloom and I didn't want to, I didn't want to take her pride, her priceless family heirloom, but she kept telling me, no, it means so much to me to have these recipes loved and shared and cooked and keep on living with them. So, um, I want to share this with you. I'll actually flip this around and give y'all a better view of the cookbook so you can see the recipes and if, and I'll, uh, I'll hover over them for a few minutes. So, or for a few seconds, not a few minutes, that'd be a super long video, but, um, I'll hover over each page for a few seconds and y'all can hit pause and probably be able to screenshot or write down the recipe that you may like. If you're not able to do so, and there's one that you really want to try from here, then comment, let me know, and I'll do my best to take a picture and post it in the comments. Let's, let's let this recipe book live on okay let's let's let her great aunt hilda live on in the recipes in her cookbook in the mortician supply company calendar from 1959. now let me open it up now i try to be i try to handle this with kid gloves because it's older and it's it was falling apart when she gave it to me so yeah i'm gonna have to switch the camera around i can't do a good job of showing you that much but i will show you the sides and stuff and See, I'm trying to handle it with your gloves here. It's so cool. Let me flip this around to show you. And you can tell by the food stains that it was cooked in a lot. That one's got a star, the no-bake fudge. You know, that one's probably good. Let me zoom up on that one some. Oleo margarine. Love it. It's an old-fashioned word for, or oleo is an old-fashioned word for margarine, if y'all didn't know. And I have never done this kind of video before, so I'm trying to do it in a way that would actually be beneficial. That was an old, old-fashioned one. I can't really make out the ingredients for that one too well. It looks like a half a cup of butter, one cup of sugar, two eggs. I'm not sure. Three bananas? Maybe it's bananas. Two cups of flour. Um, two teaspoons of baking powder and a half a cup of raisins. Oh, well, duh, Crystal, it's this. 
written here. Oh, that's her own measurements. Okay, so she altered or she altered the recipe. I get it now. <laughs> Hot water corn cake. Bright bedtime snack. Spread canned applesauce on toast. Sprinkle with grated cheese. Dot with butter. Then under the broiler a minute until the sauce is hot and bubbly and the cheese is melted. Apparently she didn't like that old-fashioned light bread much. It's got a big old X. What's this say? She liked them quick rolls. It says good. Back in the days when they would put stars and write comments on the recipes so you knew what was good and what wasn't. Oh, I love the handwritten ones. I just love those so much. Parker House Rolls. Baked Graham Brown Bread. Special meal is breakfast. <laughs> Another handwritten one too. I guess you can say this. We are looking at cookbooks together today. Oh, Mrs. Happy Homemaker. <laughs> Squash souffle, two stars. That must be good. Looks like she spilled a little bit on there. So it looks like four cups cooked or canned squash drained. Third of a cup finely minced onion, three eggs, a half a stick of butter, a half a cup of grated cheese, a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper, a pinch of sweet basil, and one cup of fine breadcrumbs. The applesauce cake, that one's good and it's got a star. Quick method recipe. He man steak for any day. Uh oh. I guess that recipe was too special to, to add to it. I wonder what that one was. That one was clipped out, or maybe it was so bad they just had to throw it the whole thing away. <laughs> Who knows? I'm gonna go with it. it was so good they had to hold on to it. Sounds like we got some turkeys in a fight in the woods over here. Holiday dinner. That creamed onions and peas au gratin. That one's got a star. And so does the mince, be mince meat pie. Now that's one thing I have never had before is mince meat pie. Have y'all? Chicky dip. 25 cent bag of potato chips. <laughs> Can you still find 25 cent bag of potato chips, you guys? Carnation meatloaf with sauce. Hmm. I don't think I've ever had meatloaf with uh, carnation milk in it. Party pink pie. That one's pretty. Jeff Davis pie. All right, who's Jeff Davis? Does anybody know who Jeff, David, Jeff, Jeff Davis is? I would like to know who Jeff Davis is. Why is his pie so good? Maybe I should try the pie and see, huh? Old fashioned lemon pie. Crunchy crust are made from honey coated cereal. Hmm. Fruit cakes. I'm not a fruit cake loving person. Let's say who made this? Annie made this 1966. Very good. Hmm. Well, if y'all like cheese or not cheesecake, I love cheesecake. If y'all like fruit cake, this one might be for y'all. Angel pie with Baker's German sweet chocolate. Peaches and cream cheese loaf. Well, that's interesting. Mayonnaise and cream cheese and cherries and oranges and peaches and gelatin. Hmm. 
Y'all try it. Let me know how it is, all right? <laughs> Prize-winning frozen cranberry desserts. One of the best desserts we've ever sank a fork into. Well, that sounds good. And you can make it the night before. Banana salad dressing. Another interesting one. Peach mousse. Ooh, that sounds really good. I might have to try that one too. And I have actually tried several recipes out of here, but I want to try so many more. There we go. Southern peanut pie. Ooh, that sounds super good. Look at that, you guys. All right, focus. Come on, focus for me. Please, thank you. Appreciate that. A hundred dollar lemon pie. Apple butter pie. Lemon chiffon pie. Marshmallow refrigerator pie. I have actually tried this and that is delicious. I have tried this peach pie, the new peach pie, and it is delicious. The open face apple pie is also really, really, really good. Just so you know. <laughs> Angel food pie. That's one that I want to try, but I have not yet tried. Victorian peach cobbler with candied ginger. Mmm, yummy. A pie crust with biscuit mix and butter and boiling water. Sounds easy enough. But not as easy as taking a frozen deep dish pie crust out from the freezer. <laughs> I didn't just say that. I'm a food blogger and a cook. I, I, I have to make my own pie crust, right? Irish potato custard pie. Let me get this way with this one in case somebody wants this recipe. That way it's right away. And again, remember, I'm trying to do a good job of pausing for a second on each page so I can share this recipe goodness with each one of y'all and help her recipes live on. Let's tuck that back in. But if I have not done a good job and there is something that you see and you just can't get a good screenshot or a good image of it, then y'all just let me know and I will see if I can find that recipe for you and post it in the comments. Try not to be too shaky with my hands or anything. Trying to. Ooh, that looks pretty. Another handwritten one. Pumpkin cake, handwritten, Williamsburg pound cake, bake cake, best Bo's birthday. Hmm. What's this one? Sarah Bagby. Not quite sure what the recipe is for. Looks like cake maybe not sure but it's from Sarah Bagby 
around the 50s or the 60s. Japanese fruitcake. Again, not a fruitcake fan. And yes, this thing is falling apart, but I'm holding it and keeping it anyway. And using it and loving it, because what good is a cookbook if it sits on a shelf and does not get used and none of the recipes gets made? Husband's cake. Sweet tasting Crisco brings out true flavor. Toasted butter pecan cake. Yum. That says good, so I'm going to try that one. I have not tried that one yet either. I have tried the lane cake. The lane cake. The lane cake. The lane cake is super delicious. Aunt Margaret's applesauce cake. I have tried the pineapple lime loaf cake, and oh my goodness, you guys. So good. So good. Dutch apple cake topped with cheese for desserts. Ooh, what's this? Oh, it's just another recipe on an envelope or a bag. What is it? I'm not even quite sure what this is. Here, I'm going to look at this while I focus on this page and see if I can figure it out. Sugared pecans? No, there's no pecans in it. can't be that. Well, it's something, and that's how you make it. You put all those ingredients together, and you bake it at 350 for 30 minutes. What is that? No clue. It's a recipe, though. <laughs> Miss Martin Nether Nethery serves delicious cinnamon tort. Kieran wants the big piece that Michael is already eating. Okay. Oatmeal cake. This one says. And if my fingers are dirty or fingernails are dirty, you guys, I'm sorry. I've been out here, out here planting flowers and then washed my hands and came out here to look at this cookbook and show y'all. So, don't be hating. <laughs> the Old Grincher House Prune Cake. And this is the last page. We did it. We looked at the whole cookbook together. I hope that you have enjoyed looking at this cookbook along with me. Um, it's a very special possession for me and I will hold on to it and cherish it and cook with it as long as I'm here. And I hope that you, if you enjoyed it, that you'll share this with your friends and your family or whoever is on your page and Bring the recipe love to them too. I hope y'all have a blessed day. I know this is a little bit different than my typical normal cooking videos, but that's kind of cool, right? <laughs> I'll see y'all later. Bye y'all.